lot of the news that has been breaking in the last couple of days, not necessarily about the teams that are playing here in Houston, but about, shall we say, the waiver wire, whether it's players going into the NBA draft, whether it's players going into the portal, whether it's players doing both. You're seeing that. You're seeing, I'm going to declare for the NBA draft, but I'm also going to put my name into the transfer portal, not even necessarily ruling out the potential to go back to the school I was at, just basically testing the market across the board. A number of schools have been impacted by that in recent days. The first one that I want to talk about is Michigan. And, Travis, I'm going to start with you. Uh, we were here on Friday. You had breaking news that Hunter Dickinson went into the transfer portal on our air. We analyzed that. Since then, Kobe Bufkin has declared for the draft. Prior to that, Jet Howard has declared for the draft. What does this mean for the Wolverines? To me, it just kind of makes me question what's happening in Michigan right now. Um, they had a str they struggled this season, uh, and they had way too much talent on that roster to struggle as much as they did missing the NCAA tournament. Uh, but this decision with Kobe Bufkin is also a little bit uh, perplexing, if you will. Uh, he's a fringe first-rounder. He's a guy that if he comes back, surely he's going to make a lot of NIL money. But on top of that, he could play himself potentially into lottery con contention. He's a tremendous talent. He's really blossomed as of late into this year. He's a late bloomer. He's only going to keep getting better. So if he were to have come back next year, uh, I really would have liked his odds of going potentially inside that lottery. So the the making that he's making a jump here, and so to me, uh, it just kind of adds. Hunter Dickinson leaving, uh, Jet Howard we anticipate leaving, but now with Kobe Bufkin, your other star. So you're supposed to have your two stars back next year. Both neither will be on that team. And now for context, if you're watching at home and, and not necessarily a huge Michigan fan, I would point out this, that the 2023 NBA draft is expected to be a relatively good one. Conversely, next year in 2024, it is expected to be a down year. Right now, it's expected to be wide open. So to Travis's point, that's why someone like Cody Bufkin, by declaring for the draft and saying definitively that he is going this year, is taking a bit of a risk because he is someone, and this is going to be the case for a lot of players, if they come back to college basketball next season, would have a very legitimate chance to capitalize on that down market, if you will, for the 2024 NBA draft. Uh, Ibas, I'm going to go back to you on this. In some ways, I think that Michigan almost been a victim of their own success. Jet Howard becomes the third one-and-done freshman to leave them in the last 12 months. If any of those guys stay gives them a, a building block and a foundation for which they can build on. I think the fact that they were really limited at the forward position this year was a direct result of the fact that last year's freshmen ended up declaring for the draft, in retrospect, maybe prematurely, when they would have been, if they came back, Michigan's a, a totally different team. Couple that with the fact that the grad transfer point guard they landed from the Ivy League, he gets hurt for the season. Those are two somewhat and certainly in the latter case, unexpected losses that impacted them this season. Yeah, I, I don't think they expected to lose, you know, those guys that are lose their big man that quick and go off the NBA draft because he wasn't really ready for it. But, you know, that's the past of the past now. you got to move on. And what this does Fair right point. now, you've just lost 63.8% 63 of your scoring with Dickinson, Howard, and Bufkin. This puts really big pressure on three people next season. Number one is Juwan Howard, the head coach. Number two is the recent Alabama transfer commit, Namari Burnett. And number three is on Terrace Reed. Howard's going to find a way to get some more guys out of the portal, maybe add someone late to their high school classes, which includes a couple of top 150 players in Papa Conte and George Washington. But you can't expect too much out of those guys. They're fringe top 100 type guys. But, you know, Namari Burnett is a former McDonald's All-American who hasn't quite found it right at Alabama, didn't quite find it right at Texas Tech. And now we got to see, as a two-time transfer, is this guy even going to be allowed to play? right away mm -hmm. you know they're gonna have to get some type of waiver for this right. guy and there's a lot going on and Terrace Reed is a former top 40 player in the high school ranks a big strong guy who can presumably take some of Hunter Dickinson's minutes and, and fill those but he's got to step up in a big way so I would not want to be in Juwan Howard's shoe right now he's got a lot of work to do you know I actually think that although Hunter Dickinson should be one of the best big men in college basketball next year I think Michigan's gonna be okay at the five because Reed we saw him in high school two years ago. He was one of, in my mind, one of the more offensive, ready uh, big men. And, you know, he, he had a chance to come in and, and score points right away. And in Papa Conte, what they have in my mind is one of the best defensive big men in high school basketball this year. I mean, we're talking about someone who's every bit of 6'10", 7'4", wingspan, chiseled physique, 
really good laterally, and a high volume rebounder. So you put those two together. I'm not going to say it's it's a Dama Sonogo and Donovan Klingen, maybe a Donovan, you know, maybe the the JV version. But I think they're okay at the five. I think what they're going to need, Travis, is is some some shooting, some playmaking, and I think they're going to need some some offensive punch. <laughs> 